absolutely. It's so amazing to see so many students here. At first, I was expecting sort of more adults in the room, and I was going to tell you about your culture. But um, <laughs> you all know your culture. Um, so listening to the, the eight things that make you, I guess, either a virgin or a van, I come to my work um, as a sexual assault survivor um, who got eight out of eight on, in the van category, um, I guess. I was five and eight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yep, that one. Yep, yep, eight. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I really believe in the power of personal storytelling and bringing your own and my own story to the work that I do. Um, that is also part of the film I made called The Line. And um, the film works to unpack and address victim blaming for those instances that um, Cosmopolitan Magazine called Ray Rape, which is really just rape except at a party or rave after you've had two beers, or any of these things where people like to say, oh, it got blurry, it was, you know, it's gray. Um, that was sort of my experience. Um, I knew the person, um, I was engaging in consensual sexual behavior, and then I was raped during the experience, and there was some alcohol involved. So it's really this very messy thing that a lot of students I talked to have had pretty much the same experience. Um, and I wanted to talk about alcohol because it came up in a really poignant way with the Moreno Mata case. Um, basically, a young woman, 27, could have been me, could have been any of you all celebrating a job promotion that I hope you all get when you get jobs when you leave college. Um, she's celebrating promotion. She's partying. Um, and she is punished because she was, was drunk at the time. That was the kind of key to the whole case. And so I thought, it's a little cheesy, but I thought I would quote um, Jamie Foxx. Um, and his song, Blame It on the Alcohol. You know, she said she usually don't, but I know that she front, because shorty know what she want, but she don't want to seem like she's easy. Blame it on the goose, got you feeling loose, blah, 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 blame it on the alcohol. And I think every campus I go to wants to talk about, well, you know, they were drunk, they were drunk. And alcohol is used as a shield. Number one, women are still punished for being sexual beings, right? So she doesn't want to seem like she's easy. I hear that all the time, right? We're, we're supposed to be sexual, we're out there, you see it in the media, everyone's having a good time. But if she's sober and she's asking for sex, whoa, whoa, she's like, what is she, a sex addict? You know, so a lot of, you know, students feel like, well, I, I can't really approach this person unless I get wasted, or I'm ashamed of my own sexuality, or I'll be punished for my sexuality. So I'm gonna blame it on alcohol in that way. Um, and I think when a woman is deemed a slut, um, and is punished for it, she becomes, in a sense, unrapeable, right? Because then she's not the perfect victim. She's actually very unsympathetic. Um, then there's this, this thing I hear a lot, which is like, well, what did, what did she expect? What did you expect? You know, she went to that party, you guys were really drunk, and you didn't really know him. What do you expect? And what I say, what I expect when I go to a party is to have a good time. And what I expect when I go home with someone for sex is to have great sex and have a good time. Um, and I, I would hope that students expect that too. Like we really need to raise the bar about what our expectations are of each other and our nights out. Because if sex isn't fun, then you shouldn't be doing it. You know. And, and again, that kind of circles back to the shame part. Um, and, and then where I, I see so many students blaming themselves is the statement of, well, she put herself in that situation. You know, well, I put myself in that situation. And again, it's what you said. What situation? Going out on Friday night and having drinks like everyone else in college in America? Or, you know, going to a party? It's just like totally normative behavior, but the second there's a sexual assault in the mix, it's the woman who's completely um, under the micro... Oh, hey there. <laughs> um, under the microscope. And again, it just sort of cycles back that no one's the perfect victim because no matter... Um, what, what you do, even if it's the most normative college behavior, um, yeah, the woman is always um, under the mic. And then just to add in, under the mic, under the mic, um, to add in the, the pop culture element to it, also, I don't know, have you guys seen the Jersey Shore? I'm sure. Um, you don't need to watch a lot of it, but the bottom line is, <laughs> to, to get the message right, but I mean, the bottom line is alcohol and consent don't mix. And you know, if someone is incapacitated or drunk, they cannot consent. If she is vomiting, she's not consenting. If she's falling down the stairs, she's not consenting. If she's passed out or going in and out of consciousness, she's not consenting. And then you flip on the Jersey Shore and you see someone fall down the stairs, take shots, and go to bed with someone. 
And it's really, I think it probably affected jurors on the case of Miranda Mata. Well, what if, what if she did really like him? I mean, maybe she wasn't that drunk. You know, and if a, if a taxi cab driver calls the police because he can't get you out of his cab, she's pretty drunk, you know, and that's, that's illegal. And, um, yeah, so 